everybody. Do you want to hear about how we make uh, pro mix growing media? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll uh, we'll get started. Uh, <clears throat> So growing media, uh, maybe some of you know how to make it, uh, so I'll just go over how we do it uh, in short and go over the components and, uh, and you'll see all the science that goes into it. Uh, basically what's in a growing media, what we call a soil, is the basic component is sphagnum peat moss. Sphagnum peat moss is uh, something naturally harvested uh, here in Canada. And uh, it, what really makes a big difference in growing media, it's what gives it all the lightness, what makes it light, what makes it, it holds water, and what makes it uh, really work well with roots when they're growing. Um, there's a few things that you, we have to keep in mind of the, the right pH, so we have to make sure the pH is good when you get the, the, the growing media. Uh, sphagnum peat moss, I don't know if anyone has ever seen it, it's a very small plant but has been growing like for 10,000 years here in Canada. Um, it has a really excellent water retention, has a long fiber, so it provides a lot of air. And when you harvest it in the peat bogs, it's very acidic, so we have to amend it to make it good for plants to grow. Uh, you see here the picture there, the, those long roots and the green at the top there, that's the sphagnum. Um, if, and just this, this is a picture where you see the, the area that is, has to be worked with machinery to extract that long fiber from the, from the field. And keep in mind, it's always in the north, so it's not an area where there's any land used for agriculture. It's just land used where there's spruce and fir trees growing. So we have to remove those in order to get access. And as you see on that bottom picture here, that's the machinery that's going into the fields and picking up the, the peat moss. And there's only about 20 days in a year that we can harvest this peat moss because we can't go in there when it's wet. Uh, it has to be dry enough and fluffed up. So there's about 20 days in the summer where we can actually harvest. And that's a, it's a good year. There's some years where we can only go out maybe 15 days. So um, that's why sometimes there's uh, you know, more challenges in harvesting this peat moss. Another component that's really important that we're seeing more and more in uh, mixes is core, chunk core. This is from coconut. Um, coconut with peat make a really, really super combination in growing media. It has a great water retention. It can really help in um, saving on water and fertilizers. Uh, <clears throat> It, it gives a really a lot of aeration in, in, in the mix, so the roots can really breathe well. Healthy roots need to breathe. They don't want to be soaking in water all the time. They really have to breathe. Another uh, ingredient, perlite. Uh, perlite also gives a lot of uh, aeration to your mix, but in the long run, it does break down a bit. So like after four weeks, six weeks in culture, that will start to break down a bit. Um, it's very lightweight, so it has a lot of great, great advantages, but uh, in, in contrary with, to the core that will be really resistant and will stay really great for months, the perlite will break down after a month and a half or so. Vermiculite also is another component that is used. Um, it has some good benefit. It's not the greatest for aeration, but it does help a lot with uh, plant growth, and you can see it like in a Pro Mix uh, BX Media. Limestone, uh, really important. If you want the right pH, you have to add limestone. Um, there's some that has calcium in it, some that has magnesium. These both sources are really good for plants and that really help uh, keep the pH because if you're not at the right pH, certain nutrients will not be absorbed by the plant. So if you're, you know, if you're pouring in fertilizer, but if your pH is not right, the plants will not be able to have access to it. For example, uh, if your pH is too high, like over seven, the plant can has no access to iron. Iron is really, really important element in plants. Um, so you know things like that are the pH has to be right. Most plants, it's around six, the ideal pH. And so we have to adjust the limestone to really meet that level. Wetting agent. Um, Wetting agent is really important for pro in, in all in all growing media.
because peat alone is, does not wet well. So in order to get it wet and to wet well, every time you're watering and you're putting in fertilizer, you have to put this wetting agent in there. And the wetting agent, what it does is that it makes on the leaf, on the surface of the leaf of the sphagnum, it really widens the area where the leaf can get wet. So this way, when you're putting fertilizer in, the fertilizer is well dispersed into the plant, and the plant is making maximum use of that fertilizer you're using. It's not going through the pot and into the drain. So that's really important to save on fertilizers and make good use of the fertilizers. Here's an example of, you see the dryness in, in the root ball there on the, on the left here? That's because there's no more wetting agent. So when you're watering, the water is flowing on the side, but in the middle you've got dry pockets. And you don't want that because those dry pockets, the roots are going to die. They're going to dry out and they can't pick up any nutrients. You want to have the most surface area that the plant can pick up nutrients in. There's also st starter fertilizer charges. There's uh, all sorts of, you know, there's uh, the basic ones is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but there's calcium and all those that you see listed there. Um, this is just to give initial charge. But after one week, two weeks, you start to have to start your feeding program, and that's really important. And that's all depending on what you're growing, what the plant needs, what time of the year it is. But it's really important to get it started. Bioadditives. Everyone has probably heard about mycorrhiza and beneficial bacteria and all these organisms that are available now in the market. There's more and more available, especially in the States. There's tons of them. Here in Canada, it's a lot, it's really a slower process to get them registered because you have to prove that they're really efficient. Uh, there's a lot of products out there, but be sure to use the right one. We use in all our mixes mycorrhiza inoculants uh, because we feel that is the most universal type of microorganism that can help plants grow. And I'll show you what it can really do for plants. We also have media where we put mycorrhiza and another beneficial bacteria that also helps against root, uh, root rotting. So here you see a picture of a root there on the left that has no mycorrhiza. And on the right, I don't know if you see it, but there's like all these hairs. This is the mycelium. And this is what really goes out and beyond the root system to get the nutrients, get the water, to get everything your plant needs to grow well. And it's, the mycorrhiza is a, it takes a couple weeks before it gets installed, but after four or six weeks, it's there for the life of the plant. And it really can help reduce environmental stresses, water drought, and things like that. It can make a really big difference. Oops, here, some pictures. Uh, these are, you know, common plants. Uh, Nicotiana is like an ornamental uh, tobacco and pepper plants there. And as you see, those on the right have the mycorrhiza. They're not really, really big plants. And we're not talking about giant pumpkins here, but you can see the, glee, the green is greener. Um, plants are better. And that just, you're starting off with plants that have just more resistance later on when the stresses will occur during its growth. Now root disease suppressors or biostimulants, um, what we're using a lot here is a Bacillus pumilus, and this works really well with mycorrhiza. And what it does is that it makes like a film all around the roots of plants. I don't know if you see it here. There. There, that, that's the film. Um, that goes around the plants and it's kind of like a bioprotector. It really blocks you know, the, the, the negative or the bad, the, the patho pathogens that can get into the system when you're growing a plant. And how, how they get in, you know, there's all, all sorts of sources of these pathogens, but they do get in. And um, if you start your plants off with this, it's a good prevention against those diseases during the course of the growth of plants. Here, this is just a slide um, where on the left side we put the disease on a petri dish and on the right we put the disease with the bacteria, the, a beneficial bacteria. And um, I don't know if you see, but those on the right, there's like an inhibition zone that's between the disease that's in the middle and the bacteria that's the too long here. 
That's the disease and that's the bacteria. So it really inhibits because it secretes substances that really blocks the growth of the disease. So in your plants, when you're growing them, this is kind of the phenomenon that's going on, but when you're in growing media, you can't really take a picture like that, but it just gives you an idea of what it looks like. Here's other examples. When we had the, the bacteria on the left and, then, and on the right, there was no bacteria. These plants were ready one week earlier to get out into the field. This is lettuce, but it, you know, it's just to give you an example of uh, certain crops and how it can react on the plant. Which product to use? I know there's a lot of products out there, and everyone has something really, really great to offer. But I think what you really need to know is that what do you need? Do you need do you need the, do you have any rooting problems? Do you have any root diseases? These are you know, really important questions to un understand. Um, do, do you find your plants are stunted after a while, that the water doesn't seem to be dripping into the media? And these are going to be indications on what you should be using as a growing media. At, uh, what we have in products, we have a whole family of products, and I'm just going to touch on a few right now just so that, just to il illustrate what are the differences between products. This one here, BX, that's our basic product. That's what we all started with, the basic peat perlite mix, way back like 30 years ago. Uh, it's a great product. The black bale, when you see like that, that has no beneficial organisms in there. So it's your basic great media. If you don't have any need for the mycorrhizae, or you don't see that it has a, it's worthless for you, you can get it alone. Mycorrhiza, most of the time, 75% of the plants will really benefit of the mycorrhiza. Maybe not the first weeks of growth, but when you get down there, four, five, six, seven weeks of growth, when the stresses really start to become important, you know, the, the mycorrhiza. And then the one with the two color, the orange and the green, that has the mycorrhiza and the biofungicide in there, both combined. So, so this is the basic product. It's pH adjusted, it has good drainage, but it's not the product that's going to drain the most. High porosity, HP, that's the one that's going to drain more. It has more perlite in there, it'll dry out faster. And this has been really for the hydro market, you know, the big seller for about the past 10 years is the HP with mycorrhiza. So again, you've got the same color coding, black, no, my, no mycorrhiza, the gray with the mycorrhiza and the yellow and the green with both together. This is fast, dry, it dries fast. This is the most known uh, product and, and most used in the market. Uh, but we did come up with last year this new one that has chunk core in it. So it's still the HP. The idea is to have good drainage, good, you know, good air exchange at the root level, but with the core in it. And the core is a really an interesting uh, additive because it'll give always good aeration to your roots and the, the media will not compact as you're growing your crop. Um, so this is things you know maybe to, to think about. We have some new bag sizes now. Uh, they're smaller so for those that don't want to have those big heavy bales we can get these smaller loose fill bags now they'll be 1.5 so that's something new that we have for this year. And um, just to finish up, we also have a, a organic. So those that want to go all organic, no chemical fertilizers, so no fertilizers that are made of synthetic substances. We have this one here. It contains the peat, the perlite, but it also has a sustained fertilizer. Uh, it's a really good fertilizer for the f first four to five weeks of growth. You'll have enough nutrients there. You've got the mycorrhiza, but now we also have added some core in there for water management because core for water management is, is really, really good. And this wets up better and you can get an overall, you know, it'll hold a little bit more water um, for the crop. So uh, if you need any questions, we have a table out there. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, if you have some right now, I'd be really happy to, to answer any questions uh, you may have. Yes? Me? Personally? Uh, well, uh, I, I, I personally, I like the HPCC, but not the seed in. You know, you have to use something else to seed in or to root, you know, to get them started. But to, for transplant, for the bigger, the bigger pots, I, I'd go HPCC.
you have any other questions? Hey, thanks a lot for listening. I know there's a lot of things to do today, but I really appreciate your presence. Thanks.